So this is the time in church or at a celebration like this where the priest takes the readings and tries to make it applicable for our lives or for the event that we're celebrating. So we'll see how that goes. Today we're celebrating the end of the year in a way a graduation for our grade eight students here in the front. This class of 2016, if you will. And as you guys get ready, all of us really, for summer break and a time of rest, relaxation, I think it's a good time now to slow down to pause, to look back on the years that you've shared with each other at Sacred Heart, and to think a little bit also of the years to come in the future. But when we're doing this reflection, there's one key message that I think we need to keep in our hearts, that we need to keep in the top of mind as we go forward. It's a real focus because it's how we can base our decisions and our choices that we will face going forward. Because there's so many choices and so much change that you're going to experience, especially in the next, I'd say, five years of your life. And the way that we have this, this main message, is that Jesus asks us today to stay connected to him. Jesus asks us to stay connected to him throughout your whole life. He wants to build a relationship with you, and that takes time, just like it's taken time for you to build friendships with each other over the years. And it's to your close friends that you ask questions and their opinions of what they think when you have to make those tough decisions, and you've got lots of choices coming up in your future, you know, where you're going to go to maybe college or university, what you're going to do for a living, the person that you're going to choose to marry, those types of things, what city or country you want to live in in the future. There's so many questions and choices that you're going to face in the next five to ten years of your life. And Jesus is asking you to develop a friendship with him so that you consult him and you can turn to him in those difficult times with everything that's changing in your life. Jesus uses the analogy in today's gospel of a grapevine, of a grapevine, to help all of us understand that he is the person that you and I can always depend on. He is the grapevine and we are the branches. That's the analogy he uses. And he says, if you can stay connected to me, the grapevine, you as the branches will bear much fruit in your lives. That's the main message from today's gospel. Now, 2,000 years ago, there were grapevines everywhere. I don't really know where there's grapevines in this area around Cornwall, but it was everywhere 2,000 years ago in Israel, the Holy Land where Jesus was walking. So using that kind of example made a lot of sense, but I think we can understand the idea of a vine, of a tree, branches, and fruit, and staying connected to the branches and to the vine if we are to bear good fruit in our lives. Of course, fruit being good examples and good, um, I don't know, being productive in society and being good people to each other. Now, if we don't stay connected to Jesus, the vine, in our lives, he tells us, he gives us a shocking example that if we don't stay connected to the tree, if we don't stay connected to the great vine, we're a branch that just withers away and dies and it doesn't produce any fruit. And if it does somehow produce fruit, it's that little fruit that you just want to throw away. You know those strawberries that have mold on them, you just throw them away. That's the type of fruit that we're going to produce if we are not connected, if we do if we're not connected to Jesus and if we try and rely on our own strengths, our own talents all the time, because life is very difficult and tough and we need the support of good friends, of good family around us. And certainly that person that should be very close to us is, of course, Jesus. Now, you guys are beginning some exciting years of your life, really. You have so much to look forward to. And you don't need to be reminded of this message, really, but I think the idea of Jesus as a good friend, as a family member, is something we need to be reminded of. This way, you will have a source of strength of someone to turn to at all times, at any point in life. Sometimes you'll be alone in your room or wherever it may be, in a, in a town, a different city, or a different country, and you may think that you're alone, your friends are too far, they're not answering their phone, or something like that, or mom didn't get back to you on an email right away, or something like that. Jesus is there for you at all times, at all times in your life. At the best times, at the worst of times, guaranteed, he is there. And it's if we stay connected to Jesus, who is the vine, that we will bear that great fruit. Now, St. Paul, St. Paul, half of the New Testament of the Bible is St. Paul's letters. He did tremendous things, amazing things. A part of me thinks that the only reason many of us are baptized Catholic is thanks to the great work that St. Paul did in his life. And his phrase, his line that really rings true, and you see a lot of athletes and uh, even actors and stuff, they have this tattooed on them, or at least the, the scripture passage, I can do all things in Jesus Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things in Jesus Christ who gives me strength. Because they all realize that it's Jesus Christ that gives them that strength to do the great things that they are doing in their lives. And that's exactly the great things that all of you are called to do in your lives. 
St. Paul did these amazing things traveling all around the known world, overcoming huge challenges, huge obstacles, being imprisoned, being beaten, and you name it, St. Paul went through it. And he achieved all these things because he stayed connected to Jesus, who was the vine, who was the tree that he was connected to. Now, I don't know about you, just curious, anyone, it doesn't have to be just the grade eights, who follows basketball? Who was involved in watching like Cleveland come back three to one against the Golden State Warriors? Just a couple people, you guys don't like basketball? Or, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, well, I'm gonna talk about basketball just for a little bit, if you'll permit me that, because it was really exciting, and uh, anyway. Now, who knows what an MVP is in a sport? A most valuable player, just curious, just curious, because nobody watched basketball, but you know what MVP is, thank goodness, thank goodness, praise God, praise God, they know what an MVP is. But anyway, most valuable player, if you didn't know, it's the most valuable player either on a team or in a league. So for basketball, it's been the same two guys for the last three years. Does anybody know who won this year, the last year? Anybody know who won the MVP for the NBA? Someone help me out. Yes. Yeah. Steph Curry. And who won the year before? Yeah. Steph Curry. And who won the year before that? Does anybody remember that one? Kevin Durant. Okay. So anyways, the point is not to point these guys out, but they're the MVPs. They're considered the best on their team, the best in the league at a time, period. You could do this for hockey, you can do this for any other sport. But why I bring that up, because the playoffs just finished, but these are considered some of the most talented athletes in their sport at this time, currently, the last three years. And what did they do in their acceptance speech when they were called up to receive an award, their MVP award speech? The first thing, you can look this up on YouTube, I'm not pulling your leg, you can look this up. The first thing they did, both of them, was thank God. Tell God that thank you very much for the talent you've given me. Thank you for the opportunities you've given me. Thank you for being the savior of my life, the center of my life. Thank you for the personal relationship I've had. They thank their parents, their family, for raising them with faith and practicing this faith so that they can know Jesus Christ and do the great things that they can do. And all of them, both of these guys, had a deep relationship with Christ. And he, they were saying that they were connected to Jesus who was the vine. And I think that's, the, you know, it's tough to find good role models in life. But some good role models hopefully excel in living their faith, and these two guys are certainly two of them. Now, when we talk about Steph Curry or Kevin Durant, and certainly St. Paul, and I'll even throw myself in there, but all of us are recommending to you guys to have a deep personal relationship with Jesus Christ so that you can have that strong base, that strong foundation, so that you can excel in whatever it is you choose in life, in the good times, the bad times, Christ is there, Jesus is there, God wants to be with you, he wants to be your friend and at the center of your very life. And we need to be reminded of this, we need to be reminded of this, whenever we're faced with the choices going forward, because you got to ask yourself, and I'm sure you guys do this, especially you watch TV or something like that, is who do I trust? Like commercials and advertisements is who do I trust? Do I trust this person to be telling me the truth or are they trying to you know, lie to me, are they trying to sell me something, is it real or not? And so Jesus Christ over the centuries, over all of human history, has been someone that we can trust, who is there for us at all times, and that has our back. He's got our back, back at all times. And I'm, don't just take it from me. Maybe it's the first time you've heard it. I doubt it. But if it is, don't just take it from me. I'll tell you right now, this is the year 2016. 2016. Does anybody know roughly how many people there are on the planet? Roughly? Anybody have a guess? Yes. Yeah, about 7 billion people. You know how many people on the planet today have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and put him at the center of their lives? Multiple billions, at least 2.5 billion people. So it's not just me telling you this today for the first time or maybe throughout your years or your family's told you this or maybe we're in a church. No, billions of people are Christian that are baptized, that believe in Jesus Christ and put him as a center of their life. They take the time to pray, to read scripture, to come to church, to practice their faith. And all of them, all of them, the billions of people find that being attached to Jesus as the vine, Jesus as the center of our life, it helps them in their life. Now I'm just telling you this, not just because um, I'm a priest or something like that. I'm telling you because I know it. I'm telling you because I believe it. I'm telling you because I'm living it. And you know what? I'm gonna stop right there, I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna be straight up with you guys because I know our generation or the younger generation, we prefer when people are direct and straight with us. I will promise you, how many graduates? Hands up, I just wanna know, hands up if you're graduating. One, two, okay, well, I'm gonna guess 20, 25. Is that a good guess? Yeah, perfect. So 25, that's a lot of work, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna to promise to pray for all of you guys every single day. 
I'm going to promise to pray for you guys every single day for the rest of my life, every single day. Whether I'm 90 years old in a hospital bed or something by myself dying or something like that, every single day. So that's a long time. I'm only 36. I'm going to pray for you guys, the graduates of 2016. And I'm going to pray with one intention, one intention, that you open your heart to Jesus Christ, that you invite him into your life. He's a very gentle person. He wants to be part of your life. He loves you so much. He loves you to death. That's what we look at every time we look at a crucifix, that God loves us to death and he wants to be part of our lives. So I'm going to pray for you guys every single day. So maybe five years from now, you're going to be wondering, um, you're going to be doing your own thing, maybe in university or something. Well, Father Matthew is going to be praying for you so that you can grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ and come to know him because it's, it's that great of a treasure. It's that great of a treasure. But you know what? All my prayers are going to be wasted if and only if you choose to say no to Jesus. Because God's not going to push himself on you. He's going to be there with his hand out and he's going to say, do you want to be my friend? Do you want me in your life? And you've got to say yes or no. And all I'm doing is praying for you to say yes. That's all I'm hoping for. That's all I'm praying for is that you open up and you say yes. I want you to be part of my life. So it starts today, I'm gonna to wrap it up. It starts today, so it may be today, it may have been years ago, it may be 10 years from now, maybe 20 years from now, but hopefully you do say yes to Jesus, inviting him to, into your life to have a personal relationship with him because he, I guarantee he will help you with every decision, every choice you make in your life. You just say a quick prayer in your heart, Lord help me, Jesus be close to me, I'm scared, this is a difficult time, I'm broken, I'm bankrupt, it doesn't matter, my spouse left me, it doesn't matter. Ask the Lord into your heart, and he will answer your prayer. So the decision is ultimately yours to make. Continue the basketball analogy. The ball is in your court. I want you to think about it. God bless you.